So following on from the previous video, we got to this stage here where we need to investigate what happens when x is very, very big. Let's just randomly select 1000. So when x is very, very big, we would put this into here. Uh, that would then give us this block here, and then put 1000 into here. This block would then become this. So now uh, let's try and understand what, what it means to have this block multiply with this block. So e to the power of x, e to the power of x looks like this. This is going to be a very, very small number just to the right. A very, very small number just to the right. That's just to the right of zero here. You see, just to the right of zero, um, this bit here is one. Just to the right of zero, you could imagine in your mind that this block here, just to the right of zero, this whole block here would be slightly above one. Let's just imagine it's this thing here. I don't know. Uh, just to the left of zero, it would be not point very very close to one because one is right here just to the just to the left it would be very very close to the number one let's just imagine it's that seven so this block here just to the right of zero it would be a very very well it's going to be a number very very close to one so imagine this block as being one point zero 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 three so one times so one thousand times this thing here is going to be roughly one thousand um, okay, if 1,000 is not big enough, let's just imagine it's um, 1 million. So when you look at 1 million, this block here is going to be very, very close to, to 1. So let's just imagine it's going to be very, very close to 1. And then um, this thing here is going to be 1 million. So this will be 1 million. So you can see 1 million times very close to 1 is going to be 1 million. If you look at 1 billion, then the whole thing here would be 1 billion. If you look at whatever here, it's going to be very, very big, basically. So when, when x is very, very big, this thing here would be, we know it's going to be very, very big. So we set up the limit of this thing as x heads towards the right-hand side, it's going to be very, very big. That's why it's going to head towards, well, all the way up there. So we know it's going to be very, very big. So now let's investigate what happens when x is very, very negative big. So when x is negative, let's just imagine 1000. That would then be, put this into here, so that would be negative 1000 as one block. This thing here would be e to the power of 1000. So e to the power of 1000, e to the power of x looks like this, y equals e to the power of x. When it's um, e to the power of 1000, it's going to be very, very big. And then very, very big times a uh, a negative big is going to be a negative very very big so we know this thing here is going to be very very big down here so we know so far the graph looks something like this um, so we guess we guess the graph could look something like this uh, and then on this side we guess it's going to look like this but it could also look like this it could wobble and it could wobble like this so we need to look at the um, the derivative of this thing here to investigate if it truly does this. Okay, so let's look at the um, the gradient graph. So let's let's differentiate it. So looking at this, well, we know it's going to be big. We know it's going to be negative big. So uh, so now let's differentiate this. So hang on, let me just move this across. Uh, bear with me. So, so when you differentiate this, when you differentiate this, when you differentiate this, you've got to use the product, the product rule because at the moment you've got one block times another block. So the product rule is differentiate the first, leave the second alone. That will then give you this. And then leave the first alone, leave the first alone, and then differentiate the second. When you differentiate the second, it will be e to the power of 1 over x and then times the derivative of this. Uh, the derivative of this is actually uh, minus x, mi this thing here. So, uh, so when you differentiate this, it will give you this. So now let's tidy this up. So, um, so let's move this negative out here. And then you've got x and 1 over x squared. 1 over x squared. e to the power of 1 over x. So now, um, now this gets cancelled out of this, so that will then give you this. So the point is, dy by dx equals this thing here. Um, so by looking at the gradient, 
By looking at dy by dx, it gives us an insight into what the graph is doing. First, um, let's try and find out where the graph will be, where the gradient will be zero. For if, for if it truly does this, we know that here the gradient will be zero, here the gradient is zero, here the gradient is zero, and so on. Let's investigate where, where, where on this graph the gradient will be zero. So put zero into dy by dx. So put zero into dy by dx. So hang on. Put zero into dy by dx. So now, um, now, now looking at this, when, when, what value of x will make dy by, what, sorry, what, um, what value of x will make the right hand side equal zero? Well, the only value that will make the right hand side to be zero, notice that this is exactly the same as this. So if you insert the number one into the x, then this will be exactly the same as this, giving you zero. The point here is that, the point is that when x is zero, uh, sorry, when x is one, dy by dx will be zero. So when x is one, dy by dx equals zero. So when x is one, we know that it's going to be flat. It's going to be flat. The gradient will be zero right here. So, uh, so we guess the graph will look something like this. It will never do this. It will never do this. For if it truly does this, then we know the gradient would be zero here. The gradient would be zero here. The gradient would be zero here. But we've just established that that the only place that the gradient would be zero is when x equals one. So there's only one turning point. So the graph is actually doing this. Uh, when x is one, there's only one turning point, and that's right at x equals one. So it must do this here. So hang on, let's in, let's investigate what happens on the um, on the left hand side of the graph when x is negative. When x is negative, let's just imagine negative three. When x is negative, let's just imagine negative three. So uh, negative and a negative, so that would be a positive. Um, so that would be this thing here. Hang on, plus e one over x over three. Notice that. Um, this thing here, e to the power of x, will always be positive. It will always be a positive number. This thing here will always be a positive because it will never enter the negative realm. This thing here is a positive number. This thing here is a positive number. Um, so, so you know that the whole thing here, the, when, when, when x is in the negative realm, dy by dx will always be positive, meaning that if you if you imagine you're here if you if you imagine you're here when x is in the negative realm your dy by dx will always be positive meaning that you meaning that you walking along the graph will always be moving uphill hang on so what that means is this wait there when when x when x is negative dy by dx will always be positive meaning that if you're moving along the graph you're always going uphill. You're always going uphill. You will never have a gradient of zero, meaning you will never be the graph will never be flat like this, or it will never go downhill and then turn and then go up again. It's always going uphill. So we know that the graph would do this. Because if you're if you're walking along along here, you're always walking uphill, 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 uphill. You're always going uphill. So we know the graph would do this. Okay, uh, and dead on zero, it breaks down. So let's insert a little circle there. And then uh, we know there's one turning point at x equals one. So the graph must do this here. And by the way, between uh, greater than zero and, and, uh, and, well, in this region here, in this region here, um, this thing here would be, well, in this region here, if you um, in, let, let's let's imagine 0 0.5. So imagine this is 0 0.5. In the, in this region here, x, dy by dx will be um, will be negative, meaning that it's always going downhill. So if you imagine you are standing here, hang on. If you imagine you're standing here and then you're taking a walk, you're always going downhill, 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 downhill. When you get to x equals one, when you get to x equals one. Um, then you will start going uphill because 
the gradient the gradient would be will be uh, bigger than zero so it would be going uphill so so far we know this hang on I haven't explained this bit very clearly so you have to think about it for yourself so um, when x equals 1 the gradient will be 0 so the graph will look like this and uh, on this side it will look like this and uh, there's, ho there's a hole in the middle here I haven't explained this bit here clearly but think about it in this region here dy by dx will be um, will be uh, negative meaning you're always going downhill and then when x is bigger than 1 uh, this thing here will be um, will be bigger than um, th this thing here will be will be positive so it's going uphill and again I haven't explained this properly because I've lost my train of thought so think this through for yourself okay